but if you wanted to get the Kelly to go in the exact same skin, it would cost you $18,800. So you're paying exactly $4,000, which is ridiculous for that little strap. Hey guys, even though you cannot see my face, my name is GPS and welcome back. A couple of days ago, I woke up with one of my eyes so swollen that I could barely open it. And I've been hoping that it would calm down and it definitely has, but it's still not a side that I would like to expose you to. So I've been trying to figure out a way for me to film a video for you guys without my face and most importantly, my eye being in it. And I thought that since I always go on about how much I love my Kelly wallets, this would be the perfect chance for me to introduce you to these pieces close up and share with you everything that you can fit into them, as well as how you can make these work not only as a wallet, but also as a clutch bag, a handbag, a crossbody bag, or even a shoulder bag. Because obviously nowadays you have the Kelly to go as an option for a Kelly wallet that you can wear as a crossbody bag, but I think that the Kelly to go remains to be nearly impossible to get. And if you ask me, they are unreasonably overpriced because the Kelly to go in regular skin is about $700 more expensive than a regular Kelly wallet would be. And then if you are looking for a Kelly to go in exotic skin, you can expect to pay about $4,000 more for a Kelly to go in exotic skin than how much you'd have to pay for a regular Kelly wallet in exotic skin. And I just really don't understand how anyone would justify the upcharge for a really, really simple strap that in the first place is going to be quite unflattering on most people because it's really thin and quite long and it's not something that you can adjust. Not to mention the fact that the Kelly to go actually comes with less compartments than the original Kelly wallets and we'll definitely get into all the nitty gritty later on in this video. But if you'd like to learn everything about these pieces that you have ever wanted to know, then please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and keep on watching. The Kelly wallet is basically the closest thing that you can buy to a Kelly bag from the Hermes small leather good lineup. And today we'll be focusing on the classic Kelly wallets because there are quite a few reiterations of this design at this point. I still think that you get the most bang for your buck with these pieces and they also happen to be my favorite. So I pulled out three that I own to show you the different variety of skins that the Kelly wallets come in. This is not everything that RMS makes. They also create the Kelly wallet in gold skin. You will most often see the Kelly wallet either in gold skin or in Epsom, which is this one. And then RMS also creates the Kelly wallet in alligator, both in shiny and in matte alligator. But I think I will be demonstrating everything in this video on this piece, which was not only my first Kelly wallet, but also my first large purchase at RMS that I made about, I think this wallet is about five or six years old. At the time, an Epsom Kelly wallet was just over $3,000, just over, which is a ridiculous amount of money to pay for a wallet. But having this piece for so many years and really having the time to try it, test it and enjoy it, I can tell you that I can't justify paying that much money for a wallet like this because it will last a lifetime and you can use this as so many different pieces. So I absolutely love ha loved having this in my collection. And as you can see, it started the slight obsession. This was my second piece that I purchased, which is an ostrich. And the reason why I went for this is because I was contemplating adding an ostrich back to my collection, but I really didn't have too much experience with that skin at the time. So I thought I would invest in something that is similar to a bag, but it's not quite as expensive. And it was the best decision that I ever made because this has really made me realize that ostrich is just really not for me. I enjoy having this piece in my collection, but that's it. I definitely don't need any more pieces in ostrich, especially not a bag. And then it was a similar situation with box. There was a time when I was offered, I wanna say maybe two or three box bags in a row, and I turned every single one of them down, and everyone was really surprised by that. So I wanted to buy something to 
kind of understand what the hype of box leather is all about. So I ended up opting for a box Cali wallet, which was nearly impossible to get. And it was quite a bit more expensive than how much a regular Cali wallet would cost you in Epsom or even in gold skin. And at the end of the day, I still like the fact that I tried and have given box a try. So at least I can share with you my thoughts. And now I know for sure that I will never buy a box back because this leather is not for me either. But at the end of the day, I'm still very happy with this little collection and I'm glad that I do own both of these leathers, even though they did not work out for me. So I think I will be focusing on my Kelly wallet in Epsom because they all look identical on the inside. They, exact, they have the exact same setup, the exact same details. They all look identical on the inside. The only difference is the leather that they are made of. So I think I'm going to put these two away and then let's move on to seeing all the different features that you can find on a classic Kelly wallet. When it comes to the setup and the different features, obviously this is very heavily inspired by the Kelly bag. And if you know how the Kelly bag works, you're going to be really familiar with this interaction as well. But the way you would go about using this is of course you have the twist closure in the middle right here that you use to open and close the piece. So you twist it open and then you can remove the two sangles, one of which actually features the Hermes Paris etching here. And then if you lift up the flap, you'll of course have the base of the twist closure and then the three line Hermes Paris embossing here. And then you basically have a gigantic wallet here, which I mean, I really don't know of anyone who would need anything more than this because this will literally fit the kitchen sink and more. I have used this several times as a bag on its own. When I'm out and about just running quick errands all day long, sometimes I just grab this and take this with me because this fits everything that you could possibly want. So let's talk about exactly what that is. So first of all, you have six credit card slots on each side, six here and then another six here. And if you have more cards than that, you can actually double up. So you can stack two cards on top of each other, which I have done in the past, but you can at least fit 12 credit cards in here, loyalty cards, whatever you have. But just to show you how old this wallet is, I think I have, yeah, I still have my Barney's credit card in here which Barney's hasn't been around for years at this point, but um, I still have my Barney's credit card in there. But basically it's a really comfortable and easy way for you to lay out all of your cards if you like to keep your wallets organized and you have a lot of different cards and you always want to reach for specific ones, you will absolutely love the way this is set up. And then we have two huge compartments here, which believe it or not are actually my favorite features on this piece. Because they are just two huge empty spots, means that you can throw whatever you want in there. Obviously, most people would probably put cash and receipts in there, but I actually keep those somewhere else, which I'll show you in a second. So I basically just use these two spots as almost as a clutch bag, you could say. So right now I have some, what do I have in here? Some sanitizing wipes, but I have also put things like lip balms in here. It also fits your phone. So let me grab my phone so I can show you guys how that fits in there. So I have my iPhone 10 here, which as you can see slides in there perfectly. And you can still close the wallet quite easily if you want to. But one pro tip that I would have for you is that if you find all these different steps that you need to go through to open your wallet, annoying, which I completely understand, you don't actually have to close it all the way. So the way I usually carry this piece when I'm out and about, and I know that I'll need access to this, is I usually just put the top flap through the twist closure and just twist this, and I leave the sangles hanging because you don't actually need these on the wallet to keep it safe. If you have just the twist closure twisted, it still won't be able to come apart and nothing will fall out. And you also get a little bit more space because you can stretch the wallet out quite a bit more than when you have the sangles on. So if I know that I need access to everything that's in here, this is just usually what I do. I just put the top flap through and then twist this and I know that it will still be safe and sound without me having to go through 20 different steps to get to my cards or my phone if I need it. So that's just a pro tip for you that you can actually just close the wallet like this. 
So let me take out my phone and put the sanitizing wipes back because I will be carrying this wallet, hopefully as soon as I can leave when my eyes get in better shape. But you do get these two compartments, which I love. You also have this zip coin purse in the middle, which features this incredibly adorable little Kelly Lock detail. This is inspired by the Kelly Lock that you get with pretty much every single Hermes bag that you buy. And then if you open this up, this is a huge compartment that you can of course use to store coins. I personally usually put my keys in here. And this is actually a detail that you get on all of the Kelly Wallet pieces, other than pieces made of alligator. I think you get this also on ostrich pieces, but let me just double check, I'm pretty sure you do. But you don't get this detail on pieces made of matte or shiny alligator. Yes, you do have the Kelly Lock in here as well, so that's just a cute detail to point out. You know, it's all about the details. If you're paying so much money for these, they better make it perfect and thoughtful and well thought out. And they certainly did when it comes to this piece. And then you also get two little hidden compartments, one in the front and then one in the back, which, oh, I actually have some money in here. Yeah, I have some backup money in there, which is good to know. So I usually put receipts in here. And as you, as you saw, I have usually some cash in there just as some backup money which means that these two parts are always left free for me to put whatever I need in there. As I mentioned, phone, lip balms, I've even put things like little travel size sunscreens in there. It really fits everything that you could possibly want. If you feel that you need even more space than what this, than what this could provide, maybe try the Constance wallet, which is going to be slightly larger. But if you need more space than that, I mean, maybe just buy a bucket instead of buying a wallet because I can guarantee that this or the Constance wallet can fit everything that you could possibly need. So I absolutely love it because of that reason. And then if you close it, I can also turn this around and show you what the back of this piece looks like. So on the back, this just has the sangles attached and there is nothing on the back. I always thought that it would be nice to put a little back pocket on the Kelly wallet as well, but they're yet to do that, but I do think that it will be, or it would be a nice addition to these pieces. Maybe just to put a couple notes in there or maybe a, a subway card or something like that if you take public transportation. I think it would be ideal to just to have that there. When it comes to comparing the original Kelly wallet to the Kelly to go, the comparison is quite easy because they are pretty much identical other than the fact that the Kelly to go comes with a shoulder strap and the original Kelly wallet does not. And all the difference is actually on the inside. So if you have the shoulder strap taken off of your Kelly to go from the outside, you could easily confuse the two pieces. But if I open this up, I can show you the difference between the two. So this is obviously the original Kelly wallet. And on this, as you can see, the flap is completely smooth. But when it comes to the Kelly to go, you have two little studs on the inside that you can attach the shoulder strap to. And then another important difference to point out is the fact that the original Kelly wallet features 12 credit card slots, whereas the Kelly to go only features four, which I never quite understood. I'm sure it has to do with the construction or the weight of the piece. But if you pick up the Kelly to go, don't be surprised if it only has two card slots on each side for you. That's just the way it was constructed. I don't really get it why you're paying so much extra for less functionality, but that is just the way it is. And then other than that, they are pretty much identical. The setup on the inside is exactly the same. In terms of price, there is a huge difference between the two. So if you wanted to pick up the Kelly wallet in Epsom, it would cost you around $3,500. But if you wanted to get a Kelly to go in the exact same skin, it would be just under $4,200. So you're basically paying six to $700 more for just that really, really thin strap, which I would like to point out that that strap is not adjustable. So unless you're really tall, it's not going to suit you. It's going to hang way, way, way too low on you. 
I'm not sure why they didn't make that strap adjustable, but they didn't. And the strap that comes with the Kelly to go is ridiculously long. I've had a chance to see it in person a couple of times and it even looks long on me personally. And it is quite thin, which makes it not really flattering unless you're really petite and narrow shouldered. The strap is going to be extremely unproportionate on you. And at the same time, it's quite long. So it kind of just makes no sense to me but you're basically paying six to $700 more for that extra strap. And then if you're trying to track down the Kelly wallet in alligator skin, be it shiny or matte, it's going to cost you around $15,000. I think the exact price is 14,800 if I remember correctly. But if you wanted to get the Kelly to go in the exact same skin, it would cost you $18,800. So you're paying exactly $4,000, which is ridiculous for that little strap. Obviously it is completely up to you how you're going to use this piece. I completely understand that if 24 seven, you're going to carry this as a crossbody bag, you might want to look into getting the Kelly to go. But if you are just simply interested in having the option of getting a shoulder strap for this piece, I think there are several different options that don't cost nearly as much. So one thing that you could do is you could buy just a strap that was inspired by the strap that comes with the Kelly to go piece. I have found several different places that sell straps similar to the one that comes with the Kelly to go online, but I narrowed down my search to one specific brand, which I ended up ordering a piece from. So I'll make sure to have them linked down below. And while I wasn't interested in getting a strap as thin and as long as the one that comes with the Kelly to go, I still wanted to order something from them to make sure that they are a legit business. They are just not a place where you're going to order something and then your order never shows up. So I ended up ordering a strap from them that is made for the regular Kelly bags. And I have to tell you that for the price, it seems really sturdy, really good quality. Is it as refined and as beautifully crafted as a strap that is made by Hermes? Of course not. But for the price, I have to tell you, I am really happy with it. So if you've been looking for a strap that you could put onto your Kelly wallet to make it look like a Kelly to go, this place might be the best option for you. So I'll make sure to have them linked down below. And this video is of course in no shape or form sponsored. I purchased this piece myself purely to test the waters and I can give you guys my feedback. And um, it just happened to work out for me quite well. But in case you don't want to go out and buy anything to add on to your Kelly wallets or any wallets that you have in your collection, I do have a super simple trick for you, which I've been using before the Kelly to go was even a thing. So all you need for this is a Kelly wallet of your choice. I grabbed my box Kelly wallet just to change things up a bit. And then you're going to need a strap. Any strap that you have at home, you don't have to go out and buy a brand new strap. You can use a strap that you received with an Hermes bag of yours. You can use a strap that came with a Dior bag. The reason why I'm saying Dior is because the strap that I used in the past is the one that came with my Remova Dior clutch bag. I love that strap. You can really reach for any strap that you have at home. And all you're going to do, is you're going to open up your wallet. I'm going to be using the strap that I ordered from this new brand that I was telling you about simply because I have it here and it happens to match the box wallet that I have quite well. And you're going to take the hook of whatever strap you're going to use, open it up and pull it through the other metal piece. And all you have to do is you place this underneath the flap. You can tuck it in a little bit if you want to, you just want to make sure that it's not really touching the leather anywhere. And then if you close the wallet that you're putting it onto, it should be attached perfectly safe that it's not going to fall off and you don't have to worry about it too much. Another thing that you could do is if the hook is large enough on the inside, you could try to pull the sangles through on each side. I don't like doing that because I feel that it could damage the sangles, but here because it's leather touching on leather because you don't really have any metal piece interfering with the leather where the weight is. I feel like this is the 
the least risky way of doing it. I'm sure that there are other pieces that you can buy in other attachments. I personally would feel most comfortable using leather on leather when it comes to my pieces, and that's why I would recommend this trick for you as well. Now, obviously, you want to keep in mind that these pieces were not specifically designed to be used together, so only do it at your own risk, and bear in mind that you might start seeing a little bit of scratching and marking on the sides here, but I think you are obviously taking the least amount of risk if you're using something that is soft, that is made of leather. And if you want to spice things up a little bit even more, you don't want to go for leather on leather. You could even use something like a long twilly, so something like a maxi twilly, you could absolutely pull that through, use that as a shoulder strap, you could even use an Hermes belt if you wanted to. Obviously keep in mind that, that those will probably not be quite as long as a strap would be. Or you could even use a fine jewelry piece. So I know a lot of people love the Ferrandol necklace and they buy that to use not only on the Cali wallet, but also on the Cali pochette. I am not the biggest fan of that trick simply because the metal chain can actually do quite a bit of damage on the side because it's harsh and it's more rough than something that is made of leather would be. So I personally would stick to leather and I think it's just such an easy way for you to create something quite similar to the Kelly to go for a fraction of the price. Obviously, as I mentioned before, if you're going to use your Kelly to go constantly as a crossbody bag, it might be worth it for you to pull the trigger and just make the investment. If you feel like that in terms of proportions, the Kelly to go would fit you, by all means go for it. But for me, I've been using this trick for a really long time. I've never had any issues with it. And I just absolutely love the way it looks. And this concludes a different kind of video for today. I hope you guys still enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you have any questions about the Kelly wallets, you can always find me in the comment section down below. And I'm really hoping that my eye will heal by the time it comes to our Sunday video. But if it doesn't, let me know if there are any videos that you'd like to see that I could film in a similar fashion. And if you enjoy this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.